it together. We started going to church uh, together, rediscovering Jesus, and then uh, changed my life. Um, I, I came to a point where it's like, what what am I doing? What is my purpose here? And uh, it's it's really not about me. It's not who I am. It's just everything just is about Jesus. What are we doing for him? Um, you know, I, I'm not here to, you know, to live my life and, and, and better mankind. What I'm here is this, this is a gift from Jesus. It's like, look, you know, I died for you on the cross, so I, I just want to live for him. such a powerful testimony of John Barron. And every week we're going to be looking at how Christ transforms lives um, in the midst of our congregation. You know, you don't have to look far to see how God's changed somebody's life. And So if you have a story that you want to share, if you, if God has transformed your life, and just email the church office and we want to get you um, recorded and shown because we, um, we, we win by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony at what Christ has done in our life is such a powerful picture. All right, well, we're going to be continue on with our sermon series on Transform. So if you could grab your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, there's a Bible underneath your chair if you don't have one. So Matthew chapter 4. Last week we looked at how Jesus was prophesied over by Simeon that he would reveal the hearts and the thoughts. He would go to the deep places and how Christ transforms our lives. And after that moment, Jesus grew up, worked alongside his father, and then at age 30 got baptized, and that's when we um, continue the story in Matthew chapter 4. So this is immediately after his baptism. Matthew 4, verse 1, says this, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, Satan said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift, up, lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Verse 7, Jesus answered, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and their splendor. All this I give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and only serve, and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. So what we have here is Satan trying to tempt Jesus. And every time that Satan tried to tempt him, Jesus would throw scripture back at him, saying, for it is written. There is even time in the second temptation that Satan threw scripture at Jesus, but Jesus would always come back with scripture. And when I was reading this story and just pondering it, what came to my mind was this. What is it about Jesus that brought such ultimate victory over Satan? What was it about Jesus that brought such victory and it's not only in this incident, it's all throughout the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Everywhere Jesus went, anywhere that there was evil, Jesus had victory. I'll give you a couple examples. Matthew 8, 16, And when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word. Mark 1, 34, And he healed many who were, all, were, were ill and with various diseases, and cast out many demons. Luke 4, 41, Demons also were coming out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. Mark 139, and he went to their synagogue demons throughout all of Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. And there's many more verses on this. And for you that have maybe not been around church, or this is your first time, demons is evil. That's, that, that's, that's an evil. And so when Jesus would go against evil, instantly he was victorious. There was never this back and forth battle. There wasn't this, you know, we're going to see who's stronger here. Jesus was always victorious over evil, always victorious. And even when we read to the end of the book, when we know what happens at the end of this world, 
Jesus, again, is victorious. So the question that I had is, what is it about Jesus that makes him so victorious? And I know our natural response is, he's the Son of God, and he's the image of the invisible God. Those are true. But there's something else that I found in Scripture that really stuck out to me of why Jesus is always victorious. And then the question is, how can we walk in such victory in our life? Can we walk in that type of victory? Can we walk in that type of way? And I believe Jesus gave, gave us the answer of why he's always victorious. He says in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way and I am the truth. I am the truth. Now that's very important. Why? Because in John 8, it says that Satan is the father of lies. So you have Satan, lies, you have Jesus, truth. Do you know that there has never been a time that a lie has defeated truth? Truth always conquers. Truth is always victorious. One of the biggest things that we're trying to find out right now in our society is what is truth? What is truth? Even in, the, even in the Bible, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? We want to know what truth is. And Jesus comes on the scene and he answers that. He says, I am the way, the truth. So that he's saying that he is what truth is. So when Satan would come against Jesus, Satan had no power because all Satan can do is bring a lie. That's all Satan can do in our lives is bring a lie. Jesus is ultimately true. So Satan has no power because when you come against truth with a lie, there's not even competition. Truth always conquers a lie. Now, what are some lies that Satan brings? What are some things that Satan brings with his lies? He's the father of lies. He, he brings stuff such as anger, that we're always going to have anger. Or gossip, that you know, we, just have to, we just have to talk about somebody else. Or sexual sin, or greed, or you know, Satan can even lie to you that you're always going to be depressed, or you're going to have no joy in your life. Those are lies from Satan. And what happens a lot of times in our lives is that we take those lies and we actually hold on to those lies. And they actually become a part of our DNA. I don't know how many times I've heard people saying, well, that's just who I am. Well, I just get angry. Or I am just, I'm just a sad person. Or I'm just this. And if they become a part of our identity is the lies that Satan has spoken. So the question that leaves for us this morning is this. How can we have freedom as Jesus did? Can Jesus really bring that type of freedom? And the qu th does he want to bring that type of freedom? See, in the scriptures, which we believe is the actual word of God, it is very clear that Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly. He came to give us freedom in this life. 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the, now the Lord is the Spirit, and anywhere the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Romans 6, 8. Romans 6 is all, is all about being free from the power of sin in your life. And it says in John, whoever has a son is free indeed. So Christ came very clearly to give us freedom in this life. To give us that type of freedom. Even in my own life, you know, with Belle coming on board and being married to Kirsten. You know, being a single dude, you just don't care about too much in life. You may, I mean, you just don't care. you got PB&Js, and you're good for life. But once you get married and have a baby, you start getting worried. And I never used to fear. But once Belle came home, I was so scared. I had such fear. You know, when, when Kirsten was sleeping, and I would, I, I would go over Belle just to make sure her chest was breathing. And, you know, I would lock the doors like 12 times, and I'd bring my shotgun out. You know, I was ready if anybody would mess with my baby. And I just had this fear that was almost consuming me, that I was just bound by this fear that something was going to happen to Belle or to Kirsten. But then the Lord began to work on my heart about saying, Tim, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So the question that I have then is, how do I walk in freedom from fear? And some of you have your own lies that you're dealing with this morning. There's lies that Satan has on your life that you may be dealing with. And so we'll look at three steps to walk in freedom. If you're taking notes this morning, the first step of freedom is this. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowing the truth brings freedom. Let me say that again. Knowing the truth brings freedom. 
John 8, 31 says this. Jesus is talking to the Jewish people who believed in him. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That verse just sums it up. I'm done. Okay, you guys, you're good. All right? Look at how that just says. If you hold to my teachings, if you hold to what's spoken, you are my disciples. And then you're going to know what the truth is, and the truth is going to set you free. Free, holding on to what Christ has given. You see, if you don't know what Christ says in His Word, how do you know what you're free from? If you don't know what Scripture says, how do you know we can get freedom? Do we even know what Christ promises? Um, I'm a very penny pinching type of guy. Is there any guys out there like me? Okay, you guys all. I just saw that little hand go up. You know. I watch my pennies to the T, and uh, there's, you can go online now and check where money's spent. Anyways, I went online the other day, and I saw that Kirsten bought something. And um, I saw, I was like, you know, I would never buy something from that store. So I called Kirsten up and said, yo, baby, what you spending money on? You know, and she, she said, uh, Tim, I can't tell you. It's a, it's a surprise. And, oh, I like surprises. But the problem with the surprise is I don't know what it is. And, I, and, I, and it's bugged me because I want to know what Kirsten bought at that store. That's the same for us with Scripture. I can tell you all day long about how God has promises for you, blessings for you, freedom for you, but if you don't know what they are, it's pointless in your life. I can tell you how the key to walk in freedom from sexual sin is in here, and you can say, oh, that is great, but if you never look in what Scripture says, it doesn't matter into your life. You see, Satan has such a hold on us because we feel like we can do this life without this. We feel like we don't need this to walk through this life. But there's promises, there's blessings in this, there's many things that Scripture gives us. Remember, this is the Word of God to us. There's these blessings that God gives us that's in this book. But if we don't know what they are, how are we going to walk in those blessings? How are we going to walk in that freedom? And you see here that Jesus knew what the Scriptures were. When Satan was coming at him, he instantly said it back. He didn't say, wait, 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 Satan, I gotta Google this real quick. You know, how to fight Satan. You know, he didn't do that. He knew what the scriptures were. He fought him right away with what the scriptures are. You know, that is the same for our lives. When Satan is coming at us with these lies, we need to know what the scriptures are. Psalms 119, 11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have stored up your word. What another translation, New King James Version, is I have hidden your word in my heart. It is deep within me so that I won't do something that's against you, God. That is why it's so important to know what God has in his word for us. So the first thing of walking in freedom is this, having knowledge of what the scripture says. Memorizing, knowing what they are. The second part of this is declaring, declaring what the scripture says. There was this pastor that was opening up his brand new multi-million dollar building, this big building was being opened up, and so he invites the big wigs, the, the lawyers, the politicians, the important people, the farmers, I threw that in there for you guys, he invites all the, the, the big shots, and they all come, and um, he's got this one guy, though, in his congregation that's kind of passionate about Christ, you know, the type that shouts amen in service, and does a little hallelujah dance, you know, it really gets into the services, and, you know, he didn't want to embarrass these politicians, he didn't want to make the church look bad, so as everybody's starting to come into his brand new building, he takes the, the young guy to his office and says, hey, listen, if you don't make any noise today, if you don't shout, if you don't dance, if you don't do anything, you know what, I will buy you a brand new pair of cowboy boots. And the guy thought, man, I love me some cowboy boots. And he said, okay, pastor, I won't say anything. I won't, I won't make any noise at all. So the service starts going, and the worship's really awesome, just like when Jake does. It's really awesome worship, and he's tapping his toes, but he thinks, no, I'm not going to shout because I, 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 I want to get to my cowboy boots. Pastor gets up, starts preaching this powerful message. The guy wants to yell hallelujah, but he doesn't because he, he, he wants his cowboy boots. Finally pastor puts on that guy's favorite scripture. The guy stands up in the congregation and says, pastor, I'm sorry, boots or no boots, I got to praise my Lord. No matter what, I got to praise my Lord. And that's what we need to look at, think about in our life too. Satan tries to come at us and puts these things saying, hey, don't say anything. Hey, be quiet. Don't praise God. Don't declare God. Don't do anything. Just be quiet. 
And that's what the trap is that Satan has for us. We need to look at Scripture, and we need to speak out Scripture. You see, when Jesus was talking here, when he's talking with Satan, he spoke it out. Now, what is it about speaking out? Are these some magical words? No. What they are, when you speak something, it becomes truth in your life. When you hold on to something, when you're saying something, it becomes a part of you. I'll give you an example. When I walked in this morning, um, I was greeted by some passionate Iowa Hawkeye people. And they were like, hey, Tim, we're 6-0. and oh. What are you going to say now on stage, you know? And I said, just wait. Wait till you guys play us. But you, they, they were just passionate about that. And they begin to declare, Tim, we're 6-0. and oh. What are you going to do about it now? And what I realized is they're speaking out these facts it become part of their heart. They were attached to the facts that they were speaking, and it became part of who they are. You see, when we speak the Word of God, it becomes a part of who we are. It becomes a part of what we believe. When we're speaking it forth, it becomes a part of who we are. And that's why it's so important to speak out God's Word over our lives. I'll give you an example like this. In your prayer life, have you ever prayed scripture over your life? I'll give you an example. Do you know in Deuteronomy 4.24 that the, my Lord is a consuming fire? Psalms 59, 9-10. My God is my fortress. Now how reassuring is that when the world seems to be crumbling around us? When we're speaking out, my God is my fortress. Psalm 73, 26. My, my heart and my flesh may fail, but God is my strength in my heart and my portion forever. Now remember, this is truth. And Satan cannot fight against this. Satan has no power over truth. So when you're declaring that when my heart and my flesh may fail me because what's going on in my life, but my God is my strength, Satan can do nothing against that. He has absolutely no power against the truth that you're speaking. Are you guys catching this? Okay, that was a dead head nodding. Okay. I mean, I'll explain a little bit better. Jesus is truth. Satan can never defeat Jesus. All Satan has is lies. So when you're speaking out the Word of God, which is truth, Satan can do absolutely nothing with your truth. He has no power over the truth that you're speaking because it becomes a part of your heart and you're speaking it out. You're stating facts. If you've ever been in an argument with somebody and you're giving your opinion back and forth, but then they start to give you facts, the argument's over. Because facts, you can't fight a fact. It's truth. And so when you're declaring this over your life, you're speaking truth. Satan can't come at you with his lies because you already know what the truth is. You already know what you're declaring. Proverbs 30, verse 5 says, Every word of God is flawless. The words of God, that the words spoken to me are flawless. Romans 8, 28, and we know that God uses all things to work together for the good to those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. For you that may be going through a tough time, that's a verse for you to hold on to, to speak with your mouth. Let it become a part of who you are. Knowledge, declaring, and finally standing. Ephesians 6, 11 says this, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand. A lot of times when we think about, you know, fighting against the evil, fighting against, you know, Satan in our lives, we often think of trying to take ground, trying to take it. All that God tell, tells us to do is to stand, to stand, do everything and to stand. So what you're doing is you have the knowledge of the Scripture, you're declaring the Scripture, you're speaking the Scripture, and finally you're standing on that promise. You're holding on to that promise. Trusting in that promise is as if you give a car, you put, you know, you send it to the car shop, you hand it over to them, and you trust whatever they're doing with that car. You trust how they're going to take care of that car. You're putting your faith and your trust in them. The same thing with God is that when you look at these scriptures and understand what God has in store for your life, you have that knowledge. You declare that knowledge, and finally you stand on that promise that was given to you. You stand on what was spoken to you. And when you do that, Satan has absolutely no authority in your life. Satan cannot defeat Jesus. Satan has no power over Jesus. Truth. 
always triumphs over a lie. All that Satan has in our lives, all that Satan can do in my life and your life is speak lies. It's all Satan can do. And so the question that I want to leave you with today is this. Have you allowed Satan to speak lies into your life? Because you know, you know, you can get 10 compliments a day, but if you get one negative compliment, your whole day is ruined, right? It just kind of messes with you, that one negative thing. And that's what Satan does. We can see 10 scriptures of God's blessing and things in our lives and the freedom that God gives us, but if we allow that one lie into our life, it destroys our whole day. It destroys what we're trying to do. Satan wants to give us lies. He's trying to deceive us with lies. You know, in our society, we're always trying to find out about truth. What is truth? How do you know what is right and wrong? What is truth? How do you know if they're telling the truth? Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He is truth. I can invite the worship team up. As we continue in our, with our walk with Christ, for those that are saved, are there areas in your life that you've allowed Satan to speak lies in? Are there things in your life where you've let Satan speak a lie about your life? Has Satan said that you're not worthy? Has Satan said that, you know, that, that you just are always going to be stuck in sin? Has Satan spoken those things in your life? Has he, and have you allowed him to speak them? Have they festered in you? For you that maybe this is your first time in church and you this is your first time maybe even hearing about Jesus, do you even know this Jesus that I'm talking about? Do you even know this truth that I'm talking about? Because all this doesn't mean anything if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So this morning I got two questions for us today is this. For us that have walked with Christ, that know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, are there areas in our life where lies have dominated the truth that God has for us? Are there areas that truth has been diminished by a lie? And for us, may that don't know Jesus Christ, the question I have for you is, do you want to give your life to Jesus? Do you want to allow God to transform your life? Do you want God to change who you are and make you a new creation in Him? So if everybody could bow their head and close their eyes, with elders looking around, if you're in one of those two categories, maybe there's lies in your life that Satan has had control on you, that has been speaking into you, and you feel like you can't get freedom. Or maybe you don't know Jesus Christ today. If that's you, if you could slip your hand up with elders looking around. If there's anybody in here. Okay. See you. Okay. Everybody, you guys can open your eyes and shake your heads. Lies can be one of the hardest things to deal with. Lies can literally just mess you up. They can just deter your whole day. And so many people have had other people speak lies into their life. You know, maybe it was a parent, a grandparent, a close friend that spoke these lies into your life and you don't know who you are and you doubt who you are and you're insecure in who you are and it just kind of controls you. Christ is true. He's true. And he wants to give you a manuscript of what he says about you, what he thinks about you, how his heart is for you. Because people fail us all the time, but our God never fails us. And so I want us to leave with this challenge today as a congregation, as a family. Do not allow lies to control your life. If a lie comes at you, speak truth and stand on truth. You guys can all stand with us. We're going to sing this song. It's a song about Jesus. 
if we could declare with our mouth who Christ is, what he's done for us, how he's transforming us. You're speaking out 